This is the um, children's Sunday school lesson for the 21st of July in the year 2024. It comes from Ezra's cha Ezra chapters 5 and 6 and from Haggai chapters 1 and 2. Um, let's review from last week. The children of Israel had been taken over to Babylon and they had been captured and because Jeremiah said that it was going to last 70 years, at the end of 70 years, Cyrus, the king of Persia, said that they could go home. And they took all the treasures of God and they went back home again and eventually they laid the foundation of the temple, had an altar, started worshiping. And on that first day, there were people that were crying and people that were singing. The people who were crying were the people who had, who were old like me and had seen the old temple and knew how wonderful it had been. And now that it had been destroyed and all that was left was the foundation. And the people that were singing were people who had been born in captivity, had never seen the temple, and now were back in Jerusalem and were worshiping where their parents and grandparents had worshiped, and they found it so wonderful. Now we're a little bit further on, and at the end of last story I told you that the people around them sent letters and said this isn't really fair, that the people of Jerusalem shouldn't be allowed to rebuild their temple. And the king had stopped them. Now, God has two prophets. Their names are Haggai and Zechariah. And they both have books in the Old Testament. You can look for them, Haggai and Zechariah. And they said, why are you living in your homes? You've got your homes all fixed up, but you haven't worked on God's house. Why don't you finish building the temple? To just have a foundation with no temple on the top is not good. You have beautiful paneled houses, but God's house is laying in ruins. You plant much in your fields, but the vegetables aren't growing, and it's because you're not obeying God. You drink a lot, but you're still thirsty. You um, put your money in a purse, but the purse has holes in it, and the money just falls right back out again. Go get wood from the mountains and build God's house. God has been trying to get your attention. This is what he did. He said, oh, there's not going to be any rain. And so there was a drought and your crops didn't grow. We're in a drought right now, aren't we? We haven't had rain for such a long, long time. Um, so God has been trying to get your attention. Zerubbabel obeyed and he started to build the house of the Lord again. But the enemy said, we, no, 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 you are not, you are not um, going to be able to build this. We'll just report you to the king. So they sent a letter to the king. And king said, they said, we found the letter. Cyrus really did say they were allowed to build the temple. Start building it right now. And so they did. And when they started building it right now, um, they said make it 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide and make it of stone and timbers and pay for it from the royal treasury. What? You mean the government is going to pay for our temple to be built? Whoa, this is crazy. So um, they did. And they built it and they finished it. And when they finished making the temple 90 feet tall, they um, celebrated, they made sacrifices, they worshiped, and they had a Passover. And then God sent a man named Ezra. And that's the name of the book in the Bible that this story is coming from. He was the teacher. He brought more men and families from Babylon to live in Jerusalem. And he taught there in Jerusalem. And everything seemed to be going really well in Jerusalem. And then the people intermarried with unbelievers. Instead of Jews marrying Jews who both knew the Lord, the Jews were marrying Hittites and Jebusites and Girgashites, people who didn't know or love the Lord. 
This is crazy. God's word says you're not supposed to do this at all. And when Ezra found out about it, he tore his clothes. He put the sackcloth on. He pulled out his hair and he sat down and cried. And he said, oh, Lord, look what they did. And a crowd came to see him and everybody cried and prayed. And then they repented of their sins. You know, why is it so important to only date and marry somebody who believes like you? Why can't somebody who is a believer marry somebody that's not a believer? It might be something you want to talk to your parents about. Let's pray. Dear Father God, to marry a believer is one of the most important things that we do. We thank you, O Lord, that these people did come back to Jerusalem um, and that everything was good. We ask, O Lord, that when we make bad decisions like that, that you would cut us up short and say, hey, wait a minute, you're not supposed to do this, that we would find ourselves always in a place of obedience. And the memory verse says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. I hope that I see you in the house of the Lord soon. Bye.